Hello, everybody. Hello, welcome to, uh, what is today? Thursday. Oh my glory, this week is flying by. Welcome to video number three. Today we're making the Joy Block. It's applique and we're doing raw edge applique today. Hello, everybody. Come on in and get situated. Give me a second. I'm going to see if I can't make sure this live chat is working. Hello, everybody. So great to see you. Uh, okay, so a little bit of news before we move on to making block number three. If you're watching on the replay, hello. I hope you uh, feel free to join in the conversation in the comment section down below. Y'all, if y'all would do me a big favor and thumbs up this video and share it with your friends, that would be awesome. There is a free pattern down in the description box in case this is the first video that you're catching of this series. And I would hope that you uh, get inspired by this quilt and want to join along with us. Hello, everybody. Ooh, it's been a whirlwind morning. I have to calm down a second. All right, a little bit of news before we jump in. Uh, I've had many questions, and I think many people might be new to YouTube and how the description box works and where the pattern is for this quilt. So if that's you and you're here live, stay to the end of the video or come back on the replay. If you come back on the replay, you could just skip to the end. I'm going to show you how to open the description box of the video to find where the pattern and all the links are in case you're new to the YouTubes. And uh, I wanted to let you know, if you're on the creative crew, yesterday uh, our sweet Vicky said Oh, Vicki's here. Thank you for moderating, Vicki. Vicki said that she would host a Zoom in the evenings, most evenings. I know there's two evenings that she's not going to be available. I don't know if she's going to change the time of her Zoom or just skip those days. But for those of you who are making the blocks daily, but you miss the live or you don't have time during the day, she's hosting a Zoom on Creative Crew in the evenings uh, for those who want to sew along and make the block at night. So I thought that was super sweet. You can check out <coughs> Vicky Zooms and uh, she will post a link on Creative Crew in the evening. I think she said 7.30 or 8. Just keep an eye and keep refreshing the page until you see her Zoom link. So thank you, Vicky, for doing that. Hello, everybody. Kim is sewing today. Thank you, Wanda. Hello, everybody. Hello, hello. All right, so today we're doing some raw edge applique. All right, I've already cut my letters out, but I want to cover the two ways, two of my favorite ways of doing raw edge applique. In case you're extremely new to doing it, y'all, there is no shortage of very helpful tutorials here on YouTube that go more into the process. I know I have many. And y'all, there are several creators out there who make wonderful content that will also show you. Okay. I don't know if y'all can hear my bird. He is really upset today. I'm going to switch you over to the cutting mat. Here we are. This is the block we're making today. Block number three, the joy block. So let's just go over the measurements real quick. We're working with a background square that is cut 12 and a half by 12 and a half. Very simple. That's the base of our block, right? That's the base of our block. I've already pre-cut my background 12 and a half by 12 and a half. I've already cut my letters too, which is going to save us a little bit of time in today's video. And then you'll see it says, using a preferred method of applique, cut out your letters and fuse in place. We're going to stitch down our letters. Uh, I'm using a blanket stitch, but if you don't like the blanket stitch or you want to use something different, by all means, feel free to change that up, okay? I would say that if you're using a dense stitch to sew down your letters like a satin stitch, I would recommend having some kind of stabilizer underneath your background, like a uh, medium weight tearaway stabilizer to keep this background from puckering and shrinking up right let's go over to what this applique 
template looks like. So we're using this page and it looks a little bit funny and that's because the templates are mirror imaged. They're mirror imaged for those of you who like using fusible like heat and bond light. You're ready to start tracing. See how you can see through that? You're ready to start tracing if you're using a fusible product because the fusible gets adhered to the wrong side of your applique fabric, right? So when you cut out your letters, they're going to be right side up. Now, I did mention that you could use, if you're a fan of doing freezer paper applique, that's what this is. This is freezer paper. It has a matte dull, si dull side on one side and the shiny coating on the other, right? And if you want to use freezer paper, you're not gonna be tracing from the right side up. You're going to need to flip this page over and either hold it up to a window so you can really see through it or use a light pad, or you could, cause you can kind of see that, right? See how that's a little bit more difficult to see? You could even trace it from the back side if you didn't want to carry it to a window, right? And now you can see through that a little bit easier. But with the freezer paper, you need to trace from the back side. And instead of fusing your freezer paper, once you have traced everything, you're going to fuse this to the pretty side of your, of your applique fabric. Wanda said, can freezer paper go through an inkjet printer? Yes, ma'am, it certainly can. I would not put this through a laser printer, <laughs> but an inkjet printer, yes. However, keep in mind, Wanda, that uh, if you were just to print off this PDF, uh, it's gonna print off mirror imaged. So uh, unless you have uh, an editor software that will mirror image your PDF, for you, uh, you might just want to trace it by hand because if using freezer paper, you need to flip it so that the image is not mirror imaged. If y'all have more questions about that, please feel free to ask me. Um, or if you want a more detail than what I've just given, I've done uh, many videos you could search in the search box on YouTube, Lisa Cape and Quilts, freezer paper applique. And y'all in those videos, it's all about that. That's what we do. And I go into more detail. And, and if you're like me, you might actually need to see it being done to fully grasp it instead of someone just talking about it. All right, so no matter which way, freezer paper or usable, you're gonna trace your template, you're gonna adhere it to your applique fabric, and then you're going to cut out your pieces. Now I used the SVG file in my brother's scan and cut, which saved me a lot of time. And I already have my letters ready to go, right? I did wanna to note too, on this PDF, you'll notice that the J is uh, cut in half so that it would fit. That J is larger than a standard size piece of paper. <laughs> there was no fitting it on any of the pages without separating it. So you'll notice it's got this little circle here and here. When you're tracing this, let's just pretend that we're getting ready to cut this out. And I'm just gonna do a quick tracing so it's not gonna be perfect, right? This is what I like to do. I draw that little circle in there and then we're gonna move it over and match it up. And so, I don't know if you can see that, you can barely see through there. This should make a complete circle just like that. And then you finish tracing and you cut the J out as one piece, not two separate pieces. That'll just help you get the perfect alignment to match those pieces up. See that? You just connect them on your freezer paper or your uh, fusible. 
and cut the J out all as one piece. There's one more piece that's like that, the deer, except I don't have the little circle in there, but it's kind of obvious his head is separated from his body. <laughs> that was just to get it to fit. Beth said, I love the freezer paper method. Me too, Beth. I'll tell you two reasons why I love the freezer paper with applique. For one, it is so cost effective. Freezer paper is much cheaper than buying fusibles like Heat and Bond Light, right? And a good box of it will last you forever. And two, it is really soft in your quilt because there's no, there's no adhesive left behind like this is the Heat and Bond Light, which is pretty light, but it'll still be a little bit stiffer than if I were to use freezer paper. So yeah, I do love it. And <laughs> Vicki said, I wish I knew that last night. About connecting the J. See, when y'all work ahead of me, y'all are working ahead of me. All right, so the one thing that I wanted to make a note about when placing these letters, and I'm going to fuse them down here in a second, is that with this background piece, we're going to have seam allowances on all four sides, right? So when we place our letters, we want to make sure that we're staying away from that edge because there will be a quarter inch missing from all four edges. So be really careful when placing these letters that you don't place them too close like that because the end of that J will be in your seam allowance. <laughs> Another thing I wanted to make a note about, and I'm just going to scoot this over so you all can see me pressing. <clears throat> Pardon me. I was just scarfing down my salad and now I feel like I have salad all just right here. Mmm. I saw a post in the creative crew the other day and uh, one of our members was using a fusible like heat and bond light. It might have been heat and bond light. I don't remember, but she was having a really hard time uh, adhering her pieces to her fabric. And I think what might've been happening was her iron might have been too hot and it might have melted all of that fusible into her applique fabric and it didn't want to stick anymore. So you'll notice if you're using heat and bond light or whatever kind of fusible you're using, make sure you look at the instructions and set your iron to the temperature that it recommends. Most of the time, my iron is set on six, the highest cotton setting that it will go, right? And that's for pressing my seams and stuff like that. But I have to be really mindful to lower the temp on my iron so that I don't melt that adhesive and have it soak into my fabric and therefore it won't stick anymore. So be real mindful. I've lowered the temp on my iron, which is a Black & Decker to a four, uh, which seems to work pretty good. I'll just move that there. There we go. And we're going to fuse these pieces. And y'all get creative with however you uh, want to lay out your pieces. I have mine over overlapping a little bit, but you don't have to. You can arrange them however you want. I think I just saw, yeah, Dina said she tilted hers a little bit. Get creative with it. But again, my biggest suggestion is just stay away from those edges. <laughs> and I'm just overlapping mine just a little bit. I just want it to look playful in there, kind of like that. I kind of want the same amount of space on both sides. About two inches, two inches. That looks good. I'm going to raise this up just a little bit. There. I think that looks pretty awesome. 
I'm going to go ahead and fuse these down. Kimber said, my deer is going the wrong way, but she's not going to change it. Yeah, don't change it. Don't go through all that. No one will ever know. <laughs> and yeah, he's just flying in the other direction. And this really just takes a second to fuse down these pieces. You can check it just by seeing if it'll lift up on the edges, which it still is. There we go. That's good. I think one thing is my iron was not warm at all because she's been sleeping. So it might take me a little bit longer than usual. <laughs> Ah, Joan said, my heat and bond melted through everything, but I never really knew why until you just said that. There you go, Miss Joan. Lower the temp on your iron a little bit. Sometimes I forget, and that happens to me. <laughs> and there is such a thing as overpressing this. Because even if you lower the temp on your iron, if you press it for too long, you're still going to melt that adhesive. I got one place right there. Hello, good morning. There we go. Now I'm going to let that cool off for a second. Uh, in yesterday's video, in case you're just joining us today, there's two other videos. They're all in a playlist. And in yesterday's video, I shared uh, a good majority of the fabrics that I had used up until yesterday. And today, uh, this background, I don't know if I shared this yesterday. Oh, I think I did. It is by Wyndham Fabrics. The number is uh, 36238B. Maybe that'll help be helpful. I'm not sure. Wyndham Fabrics and this lighter fabric was a fat quarter and it did not have a salvage edge so I do not know who made that. But anytime uh, the fabrics I'm using if it has a salvage edge I'll let you know if we haven't shown that fabric yet. Laura yes you could cut that out with your Cricut absolutely. There we go, that's nice and cool. So the majority of today's video, y'all, we're gonna be doing the blanket stitch. Um, here lately in a lot of my applique videos, I've been using the blanket stitch to sew down my applique. Uh, again, you're not stuck to a blanket stitch. If you wanna use something else, by all means, please feel free to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and switch over to the sewing machine because this is going to take a, a good little minute. All right. Just know that when I switch over to the sewing machine, my phone's over here. I'm looking over here. So if you have questions for me, you might want to hold on for a second. But just know that everyone here watching is also very helpful. So go, you know, if you want to ask your question, uh, there's so many people here. Who are so knowledgeable that they can probably help you as well. All right, I'm going to switch you over and get this blanket stitch set up. There we go. Scoot that over a little bit. <laughs> uh, let's see. I have a brown thread in the bobbin area and in the top. Okay, just in case my tension is a little off, you won't see you know, bits uh, of color popping through. 
And uh, I thought this brown would go really nicely with the applique fabric. It's got little brown, they kind of look like flowers. And I'm gonna pick a blanket stitch on my machine. And uh, I do wanna test out this blanket stitch to make sure that the width is what I like for these letters. And the length is what I'm looking for. So we're gonna just do a little test before we start sewing on our block. And I always recommend doing that. I'm gonna bump this up to a 3.0 in the length and a 2.0 in the width. And let's just see what that looked like. Gonna run about an inch and a half or so, so we can get a good idea. All right, can you see that? It's brown on black fabric, so it's hard to see. I kind of like that because the spacing is a little bit longer, which means I'll go through the stitches pretty quick. And it only comes over a tiny little bit, which on this, I kind of like. You're gonna see that little bite into the applique just a little bit, but it's not gonna be real predominant, but it will do the job of securing that applique forever in its place. So I kind of like that. Let's go with that. And I will just go ahead and start right here on the Y. Because the blanket stitch is not very dense at all, I don't have any kind of uh, stabilizer on the back side. And I'm lowering that needle right next to the applique, but it's actually in the background, okay? And this is gonna take a few minutes, so if you need to go grab some lunch or a drink and you need to go potty, <laughs> Now's the time to do it. With this stitch, if you need to rotate your background, Make sure your needle is in the right position because the needle's going left and right. Make sure it's in the right position in the background and not the applique. Y'all feel free to chat amongst yourselves and talk to each other. This is one of the reasons why we go live is so that everyone has a chance to connect and uh, talk with each other. You can just now start to see what I've done. That's going to look really nice. I know what would be helpful is I meant to do that. If I swapped out, I'm going to be really careful. If I swapped out this foot, I think you would be able to see so much better. And I would be able to see so much better. There we go.
There, you might be able to see a lot better now. I'm sorry. I was struggling. You'll see that needle is in the background every time I rotate this fabric around. Wish I had a story I could tell while I was doing this. <laughs> I don't really have any stories today, y'all. Well, I kind of do, though. Yesterday, I had my doctor's appointment. Uh, so, we go to uh, Langley Hospital for our doctor's appointments and stuff because Harlan's retired. Army, and so we go to the uh, military hospital for all of our stuff. And I left my house, which is about 35 minutes away from where I needed to go. And got all the way down there and tried to get on base, and I did not have my ID with me. And when I got down there, I guess it was time for everybody to leave and go home from work and so the traffic was all so busy and they had to stop the traffic for me to do a, a u-turn at the gate so i'm sure people were ticked because they're all trying to fly out of the gate you know to go home and they had to stop the traffic to let me do a u-turn and then i had to go all the way around through hampton to go to the other gate and go to the visitor center to get a Day pass. Needless to say, I made my appointment with two minutes to spare. There's my story for the day. All right, you'll notice my Y overlaps the O, right? I'm going to stitch the raw edge of the Y, but when we're stitching the O, we do not have to go through this section again, right? We'll start there and go around. Those little curvy sections take a little bit longer. <laughs> I thought that was so nice of Vicki to uh, host a Zoom in the evenings. 
So if you're just joining us and you didn't hear that, Vicki uh, on the Creative Crew is hosting a Zoom most evenings. For those of you who are sewing your blocks at night, if you want some company, you can hang out with whoever is there in the Zoom. I popped in last night for a few minutes. I'm just making sure we're still going. Linda said, what stitch length do you have as your stitch on? It is on a 3.0 for the length and a 2.0 for the width. Of course, if you're using uh, a different machine than I am, you, that might look a little bit different on your machine. But you could start there and test that out and see what you think. I like the straighter parts of the applique because I can speed up a little bit. <laughs> Those little curvy sections, they take a minute. Which actually, I don't mind that the applique takes a little while to stitch because I actually enjoy doing it. When you're doing it live and you're trying to keep the video moving, it seems like forever, right? But when I'm doing it just by myself, I turn on some music and actually enjoy <laughs> sitting here sewing intricate turns and stuff like that. I'm just going to trim away this little tail where we started. And I'll overlap where we started just a little bit. Now my machine does tie this off on the back uh, when I cut the thread. If yours does not do that, you'll want to pull this away so that you have a good thread tail. Put that to the back of your fabric with a needle and tie that off so this doesn't come undone at any point. I think that's going to be super cute. I'm going to go ahead and start right there with the I, um, with the O. The O, I have overlapping the J. I'm going to stitch the raw edge of the O. And then we'll start there with the J and skip that section when stitching the J.
Oh, yesterday was super busy, but I wanted to let you know, uh, even though I didn't have a chance to comment on your photographs <laughs> of your blocks, y'all are doing such a good job. A lot of people have been sharing pictures of their blocks. Uh, yesterday, I didn't have time to comment on all of them, but I've seen them and they look amazing. Y'all are doing such a good job. All right, so the outside of the O is done. Now we're going to come in and grab this raw edge on the inside of the letter. I kind of really wish I had bought more of this fabric here. I just got it as a fat quarter, but I kind of really love that. And we're almost there. So there is my letter O. And we're going to pick up right there. And we will stop right there with the letter J. And tell you what, I think I need a cup of coffee for the rest of my afternoon. <laughs> I'm feeling sleepy. Kind of really like that little tiny small bite like that. I was using a coordinating fabric like a light cream. You probably would have a hard time seeing that. It would blend right in, which is if that's your goal, then that would work, work really well. I 
All right, we can go a little bit faster on this straightaway. <laughs> And then slow down for the curves. Actually, I should have slowed down a little bit more than that because I went a little bit over on my applique with the straight part of the stitch. That's all right. All right, we're almost there, y'all. Thank y'all for being patient with me as I stitch down these letters. And we're on the home stretch now, just a little bit more to go. And there we go. Thank you for hanging out with me if you endured all of that. <laughs> There's a nice little close up view. Uh, because we're doing raw edge applique, I do have a little bit of fraying with my applique fabric. But uh, isn't that lovely? I do like the blanket stitch, how it separated the overlapping areas. That looks really nice. We'll switch back over here to the cutting mat. There we go. There's block number three. This block, y'all, would be so much fun to do if you were joining the Zoom because you don't really have to worry about intricate cutting and all the, you know, making sure your seam allowance is right. Uh, you're just sewing down applique. Joan, yes, my machine cuts off the thread underneath and ties a little knot. Uh, you probably won't be able to see it because the brown thread really blends in. Doesn't that blend in? You can't see it too much but it ties a little knot on the back side. If yours doesn't do that, just leave, uh, instead of cutting your tails, thread them with a needle and pull them back to the back side and just tie a little knot on the back. My brother, uh, or sorry, my sing Singer Patchwork, it does not do that. So when I'm doing a blanket stitch with that machine or any of the decorative stitches, really, I have to thread a needle and carry that top thread to the back and tie it off myself. But Laura, I have uh, the Juki HZL F600. Kit Kat, you caught alive. Yay. Awesome. Thank you, Helen. Thank you, Linda, Sylvia. Wanda, thank y'all so much. I feel like I've missed so much in the chat, but when we settle down in the evening and I finally go lay down, we usually watch a show or something together just to unwind. 
And that's usually when I pull up the live chat and see what all I missed. So. All right. So that's my blanket stitch. That's my block number three. I think y'all see I have the first two blocks up on the wall now. That's going to look really nice up in that corner. Yes, it is. Let's take a look and see what block we're doing tomorrow. And then uh, if you want to stick around for a minute, if you don't know how to find the patterns in the description box, or if you hear me say description box and you hear other people who make videos say description box and you're like, what the heck are they talking about? Where is this description box? I'm going to show you here in just a minute. Tomorrow we are also doing raw edge applique and we're making the reindeer block. The cutting again for the background, 12 and a half by 12 and a half. The deer, because I, know, I already know, many of you have already made this block and some of you are going to work ahead of me. The deer is cut in half. See that? <laughs> and I only did that because he won't fit on the page. Full size, he will not fit. So, just like I did today, when you're tracing the deer, and I'll show you this again tomorrow, so I will be repeating this. Trace his head, and then move your fusible or your freezer paper over and continue tracing the deer as one piece. If you have gotten the SVG bundle, the deer is all in one piece. It will cut all in one solid piece. I did not have to break them apart in the bundle of SVGs. Sally said, you have more patience than I do. I do have a lot of patience, Sally. <laughs> more times than some. Today I'm feeling pretty patient. Gypsy's mom said, does your machine bird nest when you use the thread cutter and restart another seam? Sometimes it does. I'm not going to lie. Sometimes it does. And sometimes it really depends on the thread I'm using. Uh, and sometimes it'll do that. But most of the time, the thread cutter behaves the way it's supposed to. I have had to remove my throat plate and clean out that thread cutter area because, you know, lint and little thread pieces might be stuck in there. And if you're getting a lot of bird nesting, you might want to take that cover off and go in there and clean out the area where your thread cutter is. Thank you, Miss Dari. Yeah, if y'all could give me a thumbs up, that would be so helpful. How many machines do you have? Well, working machines. Working machines. I have one, two, three, four. Technically five, four sewing machines, piecing machines. I have an embroidery machine. And when I say technically, I have an old industrial machine in a cabinet uh, that really needs a service. It works but I would not operate it without it really being cleaned out, but it is working. And then I have a sewing machine that belonged to my grandmother. It does not work and it's just for viewing purposes. And then I have a long arm. So I didn't count that how many that was. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna switch you over. Let's start, well, since we have the camera right here, I'm gonna show you on a cell phone. Any of y'all have seen me do this before? Let me get a sip of drink. All right, we're going to go to YouTube. And, uh, well, there's my video that's going on right now. Let's click on it. So here's the live chat. Right now, this is what you see, right? Whoops gonna play my ad let's hold on a second because I might get like a penny three seconds two seconds there we go 
All right, so uh, to get to the description box, if you're live, you have to close the live chat. So I'm just gonna click on the X. Now, uh, see the name of the video, Down Home Christmas, block number three. If you see that little tiny mark right next to it, that's a little gray arrow. All you do is click on that and see that description. And here is everything in the description box. See all those blue links? Those, if you click on them, it brings you right over to wherever you're going. So, uh, well, I, I don't want to download the pattern, but let's see. Here is uh, the optional SVG cutting files. We'll click on that, and it brings you over to Etsy. And there's the optional uh, SVG cutting file listing on Etsy. So the blue links are clickable. You can click on all of them. If you have a tablet or an iPad, I do believe you see the same kind of little arrow next to the video. All right. Now I'm going to bring you over to the computer because a lot of you watch YouTube on the computer. And I got this camera working today. So let's close this down. <clears throat> We'll open a new window and go to YouTube. Uh, we'll open up this a video. New window Oops. and go to YouTube. Sorry. <laughs> All right, so here's the video. And I already had the description box open. There we go. All right, so you just come to YouTube and here's the video on the computer. Uh, you'll see my profile picture and it says Lisa Cape and Quilts and here's some writing and you see it kind of cuts it off. I was saying I have something else and right below it, it says show more. Depending on uh, Windows or Mac, this show more or see more might be towards the center of the computer, but somewhere in this section here, you're going to see the caption that says show more. And if you click on it, that opens up the description box and there's all your links. All right, there's the free pattern. There's the replacement page number three. We'll go ahead and click on that. And up page up pops the page number three where we had the little boo-boo, right? <laughs> so that is how you open the description box. There we go. You know, I watched uh, YouTube for like two years and they kept saying, uh, <laughs> get the recipe in the in the description box, in the information box. And I'd be like, I don't see the recipe nowhere. And then one day I was like, oh, what is that? Show more and clicked on it. I was like, yes, okay. A lot of the cooking uh, channels put their recipes in the description box. <laughs> Catacip, hello. How are you? All right, I'm going to just show this block one more time. This was block number three. It took a little hot minute, but it was really because, you know, we have some smaller little curves and uh, I really wanted to take my time. You can see when I was speeding up right through here that I did overlap that area just a tiny bit from from a distance. You can't see it, but up close I can see it. And that's okay. Joan said, which machine is your favorite? Gypsy's mom said, the Juki sounds so quiet. Okay, well, just, uh, uh, I like being totally transparent. Okay, this machine, it makes noise. I have a filter on my microphone that cuts out the background noise. Uh, during the live, you won't hear this machine. But if you watch uh, any of my recorded videos, you do hear it. But sometimes I turn the noise down a little bit so it's not quite as loud. It makes just as much noise as most sewing machines do. You just don't hear it during the live. So 
Which one is your favorite? Okay, well, one of my machines was my very first one, Joan, that I got when I was 12 years old. I got it on Christmas. I love that machine because it's my very first one. I would probably never get rid of it. It still works. I've just retired her. Uh, the next machine I'm not crazy in love with. And if one of my kids needed a sewing machine, I'd probably give them that one. <laughs> it's a singer. Uh, I'm just not in love with it. My third machine is the Singer Patchwork, which is a workhorse, which is the machine I started my business with. And I love that machine. Uh, and I would have a hard time parting with that. It still works. But I retired her to get the Juki. And I'm going to tell you, I love this machine. It's a workhorse. And uh, I'd have a hard time getting rid of that one. And I do have a hard time picking a favorite. I'm sentimental about stuff, too, so. Sheila, hey. Uh, who was it that asked about my appointment? How was your appointment? It, well, it went as good as, there we go, Linda asked. It went as good as a pap smear can go, you know. <laughs> Loads of fun. <laughs> but, you know, you have to do it. I did get the referral for my mammogram, so I got a call and set that up, and uh, so there's your reminder to make your mammogram appointments, your physicals, and all that stuff. Ah, oh, Monda's saving up for a surger. I've thought about, I've been on the fence about a surger several times. I'm like, should I get a surger? But I really honestly don't think I would ever use one because I don't sew stuff that requires a surger. So I think it would just be ornamental, really. How many t-shirts do you own? Ah, uh, hmm. Well, considering that my my uh, my wardrobe consists of t-shirts and jeans, <laughs> I don't wear dress shirts. I don't wear button front shirts. I don't wear anything else. I only have two dresses. Uh, I probably have like 25 t-shirts. I do go through and retire some and save them for quilts. But right now, I have like 25 shirts that I like to wear. <laughs> Ooh, East Texas lady just bought the the Juki HZLNX7. I don't know that I've seen that. I will have to go see what you got and check that out. The NX7 Juki. Ooh, I have to go see what you got. Yeah, Hazel got the Juki. She loves hers. All right, y'all, I know that when I was over here sewing, I missed a lot of stuff. And uh, so if you asked me a question and you're still here, if you want to repeat it while I still have a few minutes just to hang out. At this point, our block is done and we're just hanging out. But if I missed a question and you're still here, if you want to repeat it, uh, feel free to do that. And if you have to go, you're not going to really be missing any part of the block because we're already done for today. Ooh, Wanda said, I think you should make some of your quilt block t-shirts to sell. I would buy some from you. Wanda, you would? Uh, you know, I always feel funny about selling stuff. I do sell the little labels that I make, you know, the little tags that are sublimated. I sell those. And uh, I sell the graphics for the t-shirts so you could make your own t-shirt and the graphics only like $2.50. So you could make your own shirts. 
I've thought about making shirts and selling them. I'll tell you, I just, it'll be like a week or so before I would ever get around to having the time to do that. But I've thought about it, Wanda. Cheryl said, is there a reason you started from the right with the Y? Or is it just easier? Miss Cheryl, I think you just pick anywhere and start. I don't know that starting any place on this block would be easier versus starting in another place. I just picked a place and went to town sewing. <laughs> so no, no particular reason why I started there. Can you use embroidery thread for the blanket stitch? Yes. Yes, you can. If you use an embroidery thread, well, really, anytime you're changing the threads, right? Do some testing, just like I did here. Do some testing to make sure your tension is right. Your machine with any particular stitch might be okay with using the embroidery thread in your bobbin, the same thread. And if so, that would be ideal because if your tension is slightly off, you won't get any pops of color, right? But if you're having a hard time with the embroidery thread on the top and in the bobbin, try using like a bobbin thread. You can get them in white and black and gray, I think. I'm not 100% sure about the gray, but I know white and black bobbin thread is super duper thin. And when I'm using my embroidery machine, I use a bobbin thread in the bottom and the embroidery thread on the top. And uh, try that if you're having problems. But absolutely, you can use the embroidery thread for the blanket stitch. <laughs> Lord, don't feel silly. Do not feel silly. Susan, uh, once you get started, I think your nerves will go away. Put on some music or something and uh, don't tense up. Just relax. And when you start doing it and you start seeing those pretty stitches, I think you will be less nervous. Sheila, yeah, I don't wear the dresses. I always think people look so pretty in dresses. I just don't look, you know, I just don't like wearing them. I think they're gorgeous on other people, but I'm the jeans kind of person. So I said, where can I find the iron on and the ribbons? Ooh, in my Etsy shop. There's links in the description box that'll bring you over to Etsy. Uh, you should see the little labels and you should see the uh, the graphics. The last two days I wore t-shirts, I made those and those the graphics are in the Etsy shop. S.L. Faust. If you make a t-shirt, you'll probably want to have a serger. Yes, I don't make clothing. I've tried before a long time ago. I agree. The serger would come in and so handy, but I don't, I'm not really into garment making. Maybe one day, but uh, yeah, garment making, you'd want that serger. Beth said, I keep looking at the safety. Oh yeah. <laughs> I picked this up off of one of the tables and put it here so it doesn't get lost. Hazel, you still haven't figured out the thicknesses of your threads? You're still having that problem? We'll have to work on that. Send me a message. Kit Kat said, I'm not a dress person either. I've always loved, I think women are so beautiful when they, you know, get dressed up. I've just never been a dress up kind of person. This... This is my dressed up. I wore the fancy shirt today. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Miss Cheryl. I think we just went over that. I don't know if you stepped away or 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 not, but uh, nope, there was no reason why I started where I did. I just picked a spot and started. Ooh, Barbara got her new machine. She got the Juki DDL eighty seven hundred industrial. Ooh, you gonna start making bags and stuff? Wow. Awesome. You go, girl. What have you made with it, Barbara? So not five. Oh, thank you so much. Sheila said, I love sundresses. I'm going to tell you what. Now, if I'm not going out to the store or anywhere, if, if I was... No, I even do yard work in the summer and jeans, y'all. I'm going to keep it real with you. I do think wearing a sundress would be a lot cooler. <laughs> I was going to say, you know, if no one saw me, I might wear a sundress. But no, I probably wouldn't. I do wear shorts, like jean shorts. But not even really that much. Patricia might have a point. I think I subconsciously picked the straight part so I could start off fast. Probably so. Hazel, that's a really good point. Connie, yes. She, Connie asked, uh, can the thread make a difference in your seam? Not coming out exactly right with your quarter inch seam allowance. Yes. If you're using a bit of a thicker thread, believe it or not, the difference between a 30 weight and a 40 weight thread can make a little bit of difference in your seam. It's crazy. You know, the thread is so thin. But yeah, it can make a difference. Uh, absolutely. Oh, Tessa, you're so sweet. <laughs> Ooh, Dari's going to attempt to make some clothes when she gets a serger. I've never had really great success. You know, in home ec, you start off and you make pillows and you make this and that and you start making, you know, a garment. And I just... Uh, if I would have only stuck with clothing, I think I would have stopped sewing ages ago. Um, I just enjoy like the quilting kind of sewing more and uh, making totes and small projects like that. Uh, I'm just not big into the garment. Maybe because I only wear t-shirts. Maybe that's the reason. <laughs> Maybe uh, maybe when I have grandkids making them little dresses and little clothes, maybe then I will start transitioning into the garments. We'll see. Nita, hello. Yes, Miss Wanda, I totally agree. All right, everybody. Tomorrow, uh, block number four, the deer. I'm going to cut mine out with the brother scan and cut. Because y'all don't want to sit here and watch me cut this out. That would take forever because I'm a slow cutter. But uh, if you want to pre-cut yours and get ready, I know some of you already have this block done. As always, I hope you feel free to share your work on the Creative Crew group if you're on Facebook. Uh, yeah, and uh, don't forget, Vicki is probably doing a Zoom this evening. Uh, so if you want to hang out with... Uh, very awesome family members. Uh, they're going to be making this block in the evening over there on Zoom. So feel free to join them. Y'all, you're not going to find a safer environment to join. And uh, 
we usually have some really good laughs too. So hope you all have a fantastic afternoon. I have half of a row left a quilt for Alexis and I'll be done with that quilt. And uh, I'm almost done sewing that t-shirt quilt top together. So kind of a busy afternoon for me. Kit Kat said, which cutter are you using now? I'm still using my brother scan and cut CM350. I won't be replacing that boy unless it just breaks and stops working. I love my CM350. So that's the one I'm using. All right, everybody. See y'all tomorrow or see you on the crew. Okay. Bye-bye.